Taxi! Hi there. Zoker Park, please. Zoker Park, yes. Yes, sir. thank you. I'm seeing some fishing here. So small creek, small lure. The cardinal rule of fishing is to match the hatch. You're trying to mimic what they eat naturally in the environment, flies and bugs and little nymphs on the bottom. Oh, no. Get out of here. Don't mess me up. No, no, no. That's not food. Scram. No, 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 no. No, no, no. This is a bobber. Bro. Bro, no, 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 no. Ah, it's a bobber. Get out of here. Duck. City ducks. Oh, come on. Bro, it's a bobber. No, no, no. I, I'm telling you, it's not food. I promise. It, it's not real. It's no, no, it's just a bobber. The nutritional value is zero on that thing. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm Mike Iaconelli. My friends and I grew up fishing the mean streams and rivers of Philadelphia. Now I'm a professional angler you got him. with a screaming passion ah! for city fishing. Ah! All it takes is a little skill and a local let's go, let's go. to show you where the fish are biting. Ah! Austin, Texas is one of the most colorful cities in America. It's famous for rock and roll, yeah. barbecue, and making cowboys cool. But I'm here for the fish. I've come to the Texas State Capitol to discover the city of Austin's wild side. Wow. She clean. Talk about clear. This is Barton Creek. It's fed by a series of freshwater springs all set in a fantastic municipal park. This river is crystal clear, so I'll have to be careful, because if I can see the fish, they can probably see me too. This is the purest kind of fishing there is, a river bank, a rod, and a hook. What the f hell are they? What is that? Are they bass? No! It's not very often I get to see whole schools of bass. That right there, there's like a pack of them. They're like all four or five bounders. Oh, dude. So many species here in the city of Austin. But this week, I came to meet three face to face. In each city I go to, it's my mission to catch three specific species of fish. I call them my bucket list fish. It's not going to be easy, but they're definitely out there somewhere. This week, I'm after three Texas legends. First up is a fish so rare, it only lives here in central Texas. The Guadalupe bass. It's the state fish of Texas. I've been told this creek is a good place to start my search. Look at the size of that one. There you go. Nice fish. Thanks, man. How you doing? Hi, Canelli. Good to see you, man. You doing all right? What are you doing here, man? I'm, I'm looking at blimps all over the place. Yeah, there's a lot of giants in here. They're hard to catch, though. These fish get so much pressure. This water is so clear. It's like an aquarium. Absolutely. People up and down the trails all day long. That thing. Makes it tough. So, man, what are, you, what are you doing here down on Barton Creek in Austin? I'm in Austin. I'm here to try to catch three different species of fish this week, man. Well, this is a pretty good spot right here. Big tree, big laydown. Structure down in the water. Do you, do you mind if I fish no, with you? No, come on. OK. Barton Creek was one of the first places settled in the area, and now it's close to the center of town. There are Guadalupe bass here if I can just figure out which lure to use. What are you fishing with there, Mike? I was fishing with a weighted wacky rig, and now I went weightless. Weightless, yeah, that's that's about the best way to go. You see one, you just ate it. That yeah, one. there you go. <laughs> a 
Good tip, bro. Good tip on the wait list, bro. It's not a Guadalupe, but this largemouth bass is a beautiful fish. This one's got a lot of color. In this clear water, you see a lot of his black stripes. Here's the interesting thing about a largemouth. These fish are highly visual hunters. They can see long distance and in almost every direction. They can even see color and are extra sensitive to red. But they can't close their eyes. Bass, like most fish, have no eyelids. This is amazing where we're at. Traffic, noise, bridges, people running past, pedestrians, boaters, all this noise. You can catch these fish right in the city where you live. That's special. So it's an incredible, incredible species. Right here in Austin, downtown Austin. All right, goodbye. I can see why the pioneers settled on this river. It's clean and it's clear. There are so many big there six and so seven many. pounders I've seen there here. There are so that... many big ones, it's crazy. <laughs> Got him, good one. Another largemouth. Time to do my bit for fish education. You can touch it. This is smooth, see how smooth it is. Feel his teeth. It's like sandpaper, you'll be okay. It's cool, right? Do you want to kiss it before I let it go? No. You sure? Watch. You want to try it? <laughs> Success! I better let this guy go. Here it goes. See ya. That's two largemouth in a row. I like fishing for them, but they're not on my Austin bucket list. Guadalupe is a different bass than a largemouth or a smallmouth. First thing is that bar pattern across the lateral line. Super bright, super wide, identifiable, totally different than a largemouth. And much more rare. I'm lucky I bumped into Dusty because it turns out he's a top-notch fishing guide and he knows exactly where to find the Guadalupe bass. Dusty! What's up, man? I'm like in shock. I just assumed we were gonna be fishing from the bank. Oh, no, no. What the heck is it? I mean, look at the water. Super shallow water, skinny running boat, jet drive. That's what you gotta have to run this river. Now, the reason I'm pumped about this, you said Guadalupe bass. That's right. I've never caught one of these things before. Well, today, today's the day. You think today's the day? I hope so, I man, sure hope so. I can't wait. Guadalupe bass prefer flowing water to the still water of lakes, so we need to look for them in the best current. I've met Dusty under the Highway 130 overpass where it crosses the Colorado River. From here, it flows southeast to where it empties into the Gulf of Mexico. So we're not that far outside of Austin. No, not at all. You're going to see jets flying over the top of the river right up here. This is unbelievable. And what? That? Look at that. There's a plane landing right now. Right Dude, there. you weren't kidding. We're literally behind the airport. We're, we're right behind it. So on one side, we've got an international airport. And on the other, a huge sewage plant. Goes to show that even in a big city, you don't have to go far to find nature. What's the deal? What are we fishing here? So there's a, you see the scattered rock along the bank, yep. right? With, with, the, with some lay down, some logs. We're in about seven feet of water right here. It's got a good drop off right off the bank. Guadalupe ought to be in here. It's funny about this lower uh, Colorado. It feels like you're like in the wilderness, but we're actually still in the city. Look, look at the that. beaver. Look, 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 look. Check out the beaver. Whoa, look at that. Is that a beaver? Yeah. I love beaver. See, we'll know if he's mad at us. He'll slap his tail at us right. if he's mad. Man, that was a big beaver. We don't have to worry about beavers competing with us for fish because they're vegetarians. They eat bark, twigs, and leaves. They're friends to fishermen because they create wetlands and great structure for fish to hide in. There's plenty of structure here. I'm using different rods and different lures to make the most of my chances. The main reason is to have multiple presentations ready. You've got shallow water current areas, great for a little crankbait. You've got deeper pools with big rocks and logs. Come on, Guad. 
Come on, Guad. Can't believe we hadn't caught one yet. I know I can't either. This is insane, dude. I've been working the bank for three hours and not a single nibble. I'm almost out of daylight, and the Guadalupe is proving to be as rare as they say it is. Come on, fish. Oh. Mine broke. Right where we're we supposed to be. Okay, so I'm not one of those guys who fishes for relaxation. My bad. But I'm sure I just lost my first ever Guadalupe bass because my line snapped. Right where we're we supposed to be. Why did that happen? Any idea? Yes. I was just talking to myself. <laughs> All the deep water right here is in this little intake. Anywhere where there's looks like there's current. We need a guad. Good current coming through right here with this sandbar coming out. That outflow pipe is creating the kind of current Guadalupe bass are attracted to. And there goes one. Got one, Dusty. I don't know if it's a. Ah! Woo! Wow. There you have it. That's the Guadalupe bass. That's the state fish of Texas. Look at the coloration along the lateral line. Look at those very identifiable bars, very specific to the Guadalupe. Another sign that this is a Guadalupe, if you look at it, he's got a little patch of teeth right there on his tongue. You can see those same teeth like sandpaper all along the top and bottom. Lots of fish have a tooth patch on their tongue. It may help them drag prey down their throat. Guadalupe bass, only found in this part of Texas. My first one ever, and I get to check a new species off my bucket list. That's awesome. And like I always say, if you love something, let it go. Didn't love me, though. <laughs> Dusty, I, I can't say enough, man. This is so cool. Didn't know you from Adam. Yep. Uh, and you invited me out here to try to catch Guadalupe. It's awesome, man. Uh, that's proof. The people of Texas, amazing hospitality, amazing friendship. If for some reason you're ever in Philly, please let me return the favor. I will do that. I'll buy sure. a Philly cheesesteak. Sounds great. All this talk about cheesesteaks is making me hungry. So where's a great place to have something tasty in Austin? Can you help me with Austin barbecue? What's the best? Where should I go? Go to Black's on Barton Springs. That's a pretty popular joint. I'm from Philly. Okay. I know cheesesteaks, but I don't know barbecue. So what kind of meat should I get? Oh, everybody says you got to get the brisket. Barbecue is big in Austin. Wow. Any bass? No bass, no sir. This is Terry Black's barbecue joint. It's one of the best. Every day at 3 in the morning, they begin loading up these giant barbecues with brisket, ribs, sausages, and turkey. Slow cooking and smoking it to Texas perfection. That's no Guadalupe, but it sure looks good. But I'm not here for the red meat. The next fish on my bucket list is blue. Blue catfish are a popular target in the Austin area. Finely honed senses, hard to catch, and even harder in these wintery conditions. We've got a hard freeze warning in effect. We are now at 53 consecutive hours in Austin of at or below freezing temperatures. Austin is freezing! The weather this week Burr. stinks. Burr. It really tanked, it's super cold, and the fishing's gonna be tough. But that won't stop me because the fish are still here. You just have to know where to find them. About an hour and a half north of Austin lies the Buchanan Dam. Legend has it that the lake made by Buchanan Dam is crazy with fish. You can 
It's late. I'm tired. I got to get up at 3 a.m. tomorrow. I'm going to go meet my friend Clancy up at Buchanan Dam, and we're going to try to catch a big blue cat. Clancy. Hey. How you doing? Can I come aboard? Absolutely. Come on. All right, first things first. Who can I blame for this cold weather? <laughs> Where are we at today? What are we doing? We're on Lake Buchanan, and we're going to try to catch a big catfish. Is this abnormally cold for this area, or is this normal? Yeah, it's pretty abnormal. Can you remember the last time you've had two nights in a row that were below freezing? Can you remember the last no, time that happened? I cannot. You're just so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> OK, be honest with me. What are our chances of catching a fish today? A five. It's pretty good odds. 50-50. 50-50. All right, let's do it. Clancy knows this lake like the back of his hand, and he definitely knows catfish. But the cold weather is a problem. The body temperature of most fish changes to closely match their environment. The chilly catfish will probably be less active and harder to catch. We'll need all the luck we can get. Now, are there any, any good luck catfish songs that we should be singing? I don't know of a catfish song. Be <laughs> Big cat. We're going to a cove we call Toracaca. Toracaca? <laughs> cove. <laughs> In that cove is a rock pile. Okay. And we're going to get as close to that rock pile as we can get, drop our anchors, pitch out, cut bait on the bottom, and we're going to wait for one of them reels to start screaming. That rock pile's key because the fish use that as an ambush spot. That's correct. Catfish love structure. If we're not fishing around rocks, we're fishing around trees. Natural structures in the water provide homes and hideouts. That's where I'm hoping to find my big blue catfish. The blue cat's range covers the Ohio, Missouri, and Mississippi rivers to as far south as Guatemala, and they can grow as big as 50 pounds. Well, we're already starting to come up on the edge of it here. Clancy, you want me to start bringing it back the other way? Yeah, just start slowly pulling it in. OK. Wet hands, 30 degree weather, not good. First time, great. How'd I do? You did great. Best anchor guy I've had all day. Anchor boy. You hear that? Every morning. What is that? Clancy? That, that's coyotes. You can tell they're right over here. Coyotes in the wild normally need up to 16 square miles of land to survive. But in urban areas like Austin, less than one square mile is enough. Every morning. That's awesome, coyotes. Wow, OK, maybe it'll be good luck. Lake Buchanan is an amazing habitat, but it's not natural. It's man-made. More than a century ago, engineers began damming Austin's Colorado River. This dam, when it was built in the 1930s, was the longest multi-arch dam in the United States at over two miles long. They created six dams that form six lakes, and they make up Austin's main waterways. These lakes are an amazing place to find fish in the city. Got to find that cat. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. You know, I've only got a week to do it. Doesn't matter if it's cold. I've got to catch those three species. No fish left behind. Blue catfish are opportunistic predators. They hunt for other fish, but will also gobble up anything they find, like plants, bugs, or worms. One of their most common prey, American gizzard shad. Okay, look, 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 look. There's shad, there's shad busting out there already. They are jumping everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot more activity. The sun's coming up now. The shad's starting to move out of this cove. We're seeing shad, gizzard shad, threadfins busting everywhere. You can go to just about any cove on the lake. It's the same thing where the shad go in at night and come out in the morning. Yep. They move out of that shallow water because it's the sun comes up, and they're just like that one right there. Oh, he's got it. Give him slack. If he's still pulling on it, let him have it.
That one right there. Oh, he's got it. If he's still pulling on it, let him have it. Give him slack. Give him slack. Peel it out. Peel about three foot out. He dropped it because he felt the tension, I think. You're kidding me. Wow. That was a definite bite, too. It's a frigid morning on Austin's Lake Buchanan, so any signs of life is good. But I might have just lost my first blue catfish. Yeah, are you kidding me? Front, front right. If he's still pulling on it, let him have it. Nobody. Come on. He picked it back up, though. That's amazing. He did it again. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Wow. They're smart. We've had two bites where literally these catfish have come up and sucked it in, peeled off with it, and then dropped it. Every time I think I've got him, he disappears. Oh, he's got it. He's going to he's going to run away with it. All right. He got something. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah. guess what it is? What is it? Oh, that's a bass! What? That's not possible! <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, you come catfishing. Maybe you should go bass fishing and you'll catch I a catfish. Catch bass. <laughs> I guess somebody told wow. the Austin bass that I'm in town. Because I just seem to keep catching them. I gotta be honest with you, this is probably the strangest largemouth I've ever caught in my life. To catch a bass on cut bait, that, that's just strange. Largemouth bass are active predators. They usually hunt prey that is actually moving, like fish, shrimp, snakes, frogs, even baby alligators. I've never heard of them trying to eat a chunk of dead fish. It's a good start, but it's not the giant catfish that we were looking for. Bye. Go tell your catfish friends. I've been bass fishing my whole life, well over 30 years, and I've never, ever, ever have I caught a largemouth on cut bait fishing on the bottom. But it makes sense. We've got this major cold front. We've had two nights where the temperature's been in the 20s and largemouth get lethargic. They slow down. Instead of feeding up and chasing, now they're on the bottom and they're trying to get an easy meal. We've been here for four hours working the edge of a rock pile and looking for a bite. It's funny, the difference, like if I cast 10 foot that way, it sinks forever. If I cast that way, it stops. It's a lot shallower on top right there. Clancy's fish finder uses sonar to show us what's on the bottom of the lake. That hump is a rock pile we're fishing. Drop her down. Drop her down. After it hits the bottom, get the line tight, you know, where it just starts to grab the sinker, you know? Mm -hmm. And then two cranks. Two cranks. What? Whoop. Watch that. Oh, oh nope. Tell me when. Now. I can't get, get, get it out of there. I can't get it out. I can't get out of the <laughs> jerk. I got him. Oh, that's a big one, guys. That's a big oh, fish. God. That's a giant. Try not to horse him. Okay. I got to get these other rods up. Nice and easy. Giant. Try your best to wear him out. Just oh. nice and smooth. That is not a small fish. Oh. He's going to dive. As soon as he gets to the boat, he's going to dive again. When the fish senses the boat, it could panic and dive or run under the boat. I can't let that happen. Oh, please, please, please. Oh, that's a big fish. My heart's pounding so bad. Nice and smooth. It is a blue. Damn it! <laughs> Did that just happen? Wow. I am shaking like a leaf. Catfish is considered easy, a bottom feeder doesn't fight. I got to tell you, all that is incorrect. They're beautiful, beautiful creatures. A lot of people think these whiskers are poisonous. They're stingers. They are not stingers. These whiskers or barbels actually help this fish detect its food. These things pick up the scent from a long ways away. They use every part of their body to find their food. 
to find that shad to feed on it. Beautiful, beautiful creature. Because they have to survive in murky water, blue catfish can hunt using just taste and smell. Even their skin has taste buds. Like some sharks, they can detect chemicals at one part to 10 billion parts of water. Man, this is what it's all about. Clancy would come for a giant catfish. I'd classify this as a giant catfish. It's, it's a good one. God, it's gorgeous. Thank you, Mrs. Blue Cat. Beautiful fish, look at that. I just caught my second bucket list fish, and I got to meet up with an amazing animal. Now it's time to hit the very center of town to fish one of Austin's most iconic fishing spots. It's a must-fish destination for anyone who comes to Central Texas. I'm Mike Iconelli. I've come to Austin, Texas in search of some very special fishing. And there's one lake that I think everybody should fish at least once. This is Ladybird Lake, but the locals call it Town Lake. It was officially renamed Ladybird Lake because of Ladybird Johnson. It used to be a system for a power plant, trash, all over the place, dirty banks. Ladybird came in and cleaned it up, and it's the beautiful lake it is today. Duke! This is Duke Kinley, who's a record-setting angler around Austin. He's going to take me fishing on this historic waterway. Just for today, I'm after an eight-pound largemouth bass, my specialty, but not a bucket list fish. Man, I'm excited. We're here in downtown Austin. We're going to catch fish. That's pretty awesome. Now, the water's clear. Is the water always this clean? Is this normal? No, this is not normal. That cold weather has changed the whole dynamics of the water right now. Yeah. We just had some rains, and you did get muddied up. Yeah. But right now, this is it's looking good. What are our odds of catching some today? Can't catch them unless we go Come fishing. Come on, let's do it. All right. You can't be a good fisherman without caring about the environment. And Lady Bird Lake helped give birth to the U.S. environmental movement. This lake was created in 1960 as a lake for a power plant. But just a year later, dead fish in the hundreds, maybe even thousands, Almost everything in the lake had been poisoned by insecticides like DDT. The event was used as evidence that we were poisoning our ecosystems with DDT and helped spark ecological awareness. Luckily, nature has a way of bouncing back. And this lake has become one of the premier destinations for fishing. It's a true fishing mecca. We're here under this bridge, and there's noise, and there's traffic, and there's people. Why are we starting here? We have deep water on this side, ridge pylons, rock piles, and a ledge. And the fish like to stage up due to the weather conditions because of the rocks that are going to draw some heat. It's going to be a little bit warmer. We're hoping those big pylons will work like heat sinks in reverse. Concrete, rock, all this stuff is soaking up the heat. The, the sun's out now. It's soaking up the warmth of that sun. And especially now, cold front conditions, all this concrete, all this rock is creating a hot spot. And the fish like that, especially when it's cold. The weather getting cold has had a serious effect on the fishing. We've had multiple 20 degree nights or colder. Under those dropping water temperatures, the fish get lethargic. They shut down, they slow down sort of like us humans in cold weather. But unlike us, they also lose their appetite. Got more of a rocky spot here. And there goes one. Good. What the? Fish on. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one, too. He's coming up. He's coming up. He's coming up. Oh, it's a good ah. Look at that. Nice, beautiful Texas largemouth. Unfortunately, only about two pounds. Two pounds is close to the average weight of a largemouth. Average length, a little more than 12 inches long. But a big largemouth can weigh 20 pounds 
and grow to well over two feet in length. The best part about it right here, letting it go for another day. Even in this lake, structure counts. So Duke has put us on top of an underwater feature he calls the hump. This is the hump right here. So we're in the hump right now. Got one. Woo! Another largemouth bass. See how white he is? Been deep. Even though it's small, it's a good indication of what's going on today. If you look at that fish, he's real pale, real white, real light colored. Bass caught mid-depth can look pale. The bite came in the middle of the water column. The water column is from the surface of the water all the way down to the bottom of the water. So that water column, these fish will adjust their height depending on their mood. When it's good fishing and they're biting, they're up near the top, they're chasing, but when it really gets tough, they suspend right in the middle of the water column. Telltale sign, pale fish, two words for suspended fish in cold water. Not good. Not good at all. It's beautiful above the water today, and I'm happy to see what this famous lake has become. But the big bass I was hoping for? That'll have to wait for another day. Well, I don't like to admit failure, but today was tough. Today, the fish won. I didn't win today, and that's OK. One of the great things about fishing is Failure brings you back for more, but cutting my losses, just about dark. The good news is I'm going to have a couple more opportunities to catch my other species. I mean, this is a prime example of you could be in the best place in the world, but if the weather goes south, it can be tough. Austin, Texas. I came here for a rare Guadalupe bass, and I got it. I came here for a big blue catfish, and I got that one too. Just one fish left on my bucket list. Today, I'm after the prize, the smallmouth buffalo. There's nothing small about them. And these fish are fighters that pull like tractors once they're hooked. The good news is I've got a good friend, Kevin, and he's the carp master. With Kevin's help, we're going to try to catch a giant smallmouth buffalo. Kevin Olivier and his carp fishing buddies are into a kind of fishing that's totally foreign to me. But it's perfect for catching smallmouth buffalo. Another brutally chilling morning. We're at Walter E. Long Lake. We're just a 10-mile drive from downtown Austin. Walter E. Long Lake covers 1,200 acres and is up to 60 feet deep. This is going to be a real challenge for me. Smallmouth buffalo are scavengers, so even the bait is different. The bait isn't anything that, you know, we actually can go to a store and buy. <laughs> so this is all homemade bait. Absolutely. What it basically is is oats, grits, and then a feeder pellet called manna that they use to feed to calves, that it's all basically a protein-rich bait food. That pack of oats, it's giant. It's huge. It, it looks too big <laughs> to catch anything with it. But you're not actually catching them with that. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's the attractor. Yeah, that's actually just a freebie. So they get around it, they start sucking up food. So that's going to disintegrate. That's going to thin out. Right, that's going to be essentially like a pile like that sitting on the yeah. ground. Right. But the real key is not that, but is this. Right, exactly. So that's in there with the method. When it breaks down, your hair rig falls from the side, and that's what they pick up. How's that? Oh, we're catching a smallmouth buffalo today. Come on, let's pass this thing out. Let's do it. Enjoy. For a bass guy like me, I'm in a totally different world. They're using three 12-foot rods at a time with alarms that go off when a fish touches the line. So when we actually do have a bite, we get an audio indication and as wow. well as a visual. They can cast 100 yards. These rods are designed to cast. I've cast a measured 174 with a bait. Wow. That's 170 yards, not feet. 
That's incredible. Yeah. That's a mile. <laughs> All the right arm is doing is guiding it to a 45. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. See how far that thing went up there? It still hasn't hit yet. <laughs> still up there. The cast is going to be with this hand here. Exactly. So you're, you're, you're pulling down and you're guiding out just like that. Yeah. Oh, no! God, no! It looks easy when they're doing it, but clearly I'm going to need way more practice. This kind of fishing is all about setting the trap and waiting. Usually, I fish around structures, like logs and rocks where the fish like to hide. But it looks like these smallmouth buffalo are way out deep in the weeds. Nothing at all for us to target. And doing nothing is exhausting. Just be careful you're not sleeping with the enemy. Go, 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 go. No, it's a joke. It's a joke. I'm just joking. It's a joke. I got this coolest app. Aren't these guys funny? Like I said, a different breed. So this is why I'll never be a good smallmouth buffalo fisherman. I can't sit still. I'm ready to move already. It's just not my personality. I can't sit still that long. Let's move to this fence line down here. Got me a feeling. Hey, what was that? I thought that was one of the carp alarms going off. Haven't seen a bite in 12 hours. I thought I heard the alarm going off. I was, I was ready to throw this right in the water and start running. Magic hour. I got to get my mitts on one of these things, man. I have to. I'm panicking. This fishing trip is in its 12th hour. I'm thinking big lake, but dry well. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, God. Feels like a good one, too, man. That's a big fit. It feels big. Oh, I just saw it. The surface. What is it? Fish off! Oh, I just saw it. The surface. What is it? Oh. What? Huh? No. No. Ah, the kitty. <laughs> Oh, my heart. Wow. This is a big fish, but not a smallmouth buffalo. It's a catfish. Barbels. <laughs> Barbels are bad. That's definitely not a smallmouth buffalo. Yeah, if you look at that belly, I'm sure that's, that's a lot of what we've been putting out today. Yeah, that's all food right there. Channel catfish are the most common catfish in the United States. They're also one of the most farmed fish. Fantastic breeders and tolerant of crowding. But after 14 hours of fishing, still no smallmouth buffalo. That's a beautiful fish. Man, my heart's still beating. I thought that was the one. But that is definitely not a smallmouth buffalo. This defines fishing. The highs, the super highs of catching a giant fish and the lows of fishing 14 hours without a single bite. I'm going to have one more shot to do it tomorrow. I got to make it happen, man. I have to. Panic setting in right now. Yeah, here we are. I'm going to have a second chance to catch a smallmouth buffalo. I got to get this done. Different day today. Super cloudy, super overcast, and a lot colder. Call for a ride share. Heading to the lake. Yes, sir. Let's go. Awesome. 2 p.m. today, and I'm out of here. A flight back to my home and family. So we're cutting this real tight. Another day like yesterday, and I'm going home skunked. It might be years before I get to catch a smallmouth buffalo. 
What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? How you doing today? Doing good. Feeling much better about things today. Conditions are very much improved. Cloud? Yeah. A little bit of wind? Pressure's falling? Oh, well, see right there? When they get out there and they just start rolling around, you'll have little, they call line bites. Line bites mean fish are nearby. As they feed along the bottom, fish can bump into the line or even nibble on the bait, which sets off the alarm. Yeah, well, like a buffalo is a real, they feed very delicately, much like you see going on right there. So it's just small bumps, not committed, right. just kind of mouthing the bait. Oh, oh, oh. Let me get in here. Oh, oh, get in. Oh. This one? Yeah, that, that's definitely a fish. Good. That's a big fish. That's it. So you use the rod, right? So yeah, reel down and then use the rod to bring them back. I literally just pulled up. Yeah, yeah. Just ease her in. Rod tip all the way to the down, reel, reeling in slack, and then use that rod to play her back. She, she will beat that reel every time. Oh, my god. Yeah, let, when she surges, let her go. Let her Don't, go? Yeah. Bow to her. Let me see your drag. All right, you're good. Just easy, right? Oh, please, please stay on there. God. This is literally what I came to Austin for. Wow. Dude, look at this fight. This is a vicious, vicious fight. Look at the power of that. I'm going to get out there and net it for you. This is like reeling in a car. <laughs> I got a car hooked. Are you kidding me? All right, so I'm going to hold the net in one place. I can't swing at it, right? And you play the fish to the net. Let me tell you, I've caught species all over the world. And this is one of the hardest fights I've ever had. There she is right there. Oh, my God! It looks like a decent fish. Ah! <laughs> no! It's a nice fish. She's got shoulders. Stay on there, please. Stay on there. Stay on there. Just oh ease my her God. in. She will. Stay on there. Rod tip high. Get her nose up. Ah! We got it! Did that just happen? That's heavy. That's oh heavy. Oh, my God. That's heavy. Oh! That's a big fish. My God. <laughs> that is a small mouth buffalo. Ah! That is a fine specimen. No! Oh my God, I can't pick it up. <laughs> Look at that. Is a nice looking buffalo. This small mouth buffalo weighs 48 pounds, but the biggest ever caught on a rod and reel weighed in at 82.2 pounds. They can hit full size in just five or six years, but may live 18 years in the wild. People spend thousands of dollars to go to exotic places to catch giant fish. Absolutely. You can catch it right in cities. That's it? We're, we're in Austin. We're on the east side of Austin And that's right a now. smallmouth buffalo. That is almost a 50-pound smallmouth buffalo. This is the first one I've ever caught. Yeah, well, This is a bucket list you're fish, right? You're, you're with the right guy. Look at that. I just caught a ginormous 48-pound smallmouth buffalo. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Texas. My work here is done. Almost. Ready to get her back? Let's get her back, Let's man. Let's do it. All right, grab the handles. Wow. This is absolutely what I've come to Austin, Texas for. The smallmouth buffalo. Another bucket list fish. What a city. Austin, Texas, giant fish. It doesn't get any better than that. This is amazing. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> good? Is that no, good? Are you no, quenched? No. Are you? No, let me just hold you for a second. Okay. We don't do these kind of things in Texas. Hi. Right. 